I used to be obsessed with productivity and the whole hustle culture. I joined the 5am club, built systems, batch activities, time tracking, Parkinson's law, Pomodoro technique. I tried everything, ruthless with my time. Then I realized I'm just making my life more complex. We tend to do that, right? In this video, I'll talk about my productivity workflow with Notion, nothing complicated, it's actually pretty simple and it works. I'm going to be talking about these pages, a monthly schedule where I write the tasks for each week, then translate into a weekly format with every task I need to do, a content calendar with all my work, and recently a new way to track my goals for this year. Today's video is sponsored by Notion. Notion is basically my second brain. I use it to plan, track, and do all of my work in the same place and I've been doing it for years. Right, so before we get into the gritty work of building a productivity system, we need to see the end goal and work backwards. I used to have a simple to-do list with the goals I wanted to achieve for the year. This page, however, had a little problem. I never opened it. So for 2023, I decided to have a more comprehensive and dynamic look of my life goals to actually commit to them and see them through. So as usual, I made my list. I used the habit tracker template. You'll see why in a minute. Here in the top part, I wrote my 2023 goals, and then I added a list of strategies or milestones to each goal using a toggle list so I can hide it. 100,000 subscribers. This number is intimidating for me, which is why I have a list of little milestones. 20K, almost there. Subscribe, dude, come on. And hit the bell also. Now from 20 to 50 is not that scary. I like to trick my brain that way weird. Now, to really see my progress and hold myself accountable, I need to track my days and that's why I use the habit tracker template. Practical work progress, if I do something to advance related to work, writing, research, filming, editing or whatever gets me closer to my goals, then I check this box. Read or learn because when I do, inspiration comes. I get a lot of ideas to create more videos like this and that's a major driver for my career. So check. If I do it every single day, I will build momentum and that's what we want, right? When you're done with the 30 days, all you have to do is click new month and then you can modify the items you're checking. These templates are pretty customizable, that's cool. With this one in particular, you only have to change the first day and then the formula will synchronize the rest of the days. Now, I know this may not be ambitious enough for some, but for me, it is. I just want to give my attention to the few things that count related to my work. I'm not this mega productive dude, but as long as I'm taking daily action to move closer to my goals, that's fine. Even baby steps. I'm not in a rush. I mean, I'm getting old, but I'm not in a rush. All right, let's move into the system for my days with Notion. I like to write the tasks for each month on a monthly to-do list. For this, I use the weekly calendar and then adjust for the weeks. So at the beginning of each month, I check my work calendar and write the weekly tasks. To add a calendar view to this page, all you have to do is click plus, then calendar view and choose the calendar you want to see. These are my obligations and goals for the month. I write everything that needs my attention, even if it's not related to work because when I don't, I tend to give myself more that I can handle. Then I translate to a weekly format. I use a weekly calendar template for my days and I like to organize them by blocks of time. Time blocking replaced the traditional to-do list in my life and it could be the best productivity hack to implement in your days. Here's why. When you organize your days in a series of time blocks, you devote a block of time to complete a task. It's a more efficient approach to getting work done because you are more realistic about what you can actually do in a two hour window, for example. In addition, you get to know your work patterns. Do I like working in the morning or in the afternoon? How much free time do I have? And how long work actually takes to get done? Because we tend to underestimate the time we need to do an activity. At least, I do all the time. So instead of writing 100 things to do in a day, you plan your days more efficiently and realistically. Important, allocating work for the time when it makes the most sense for you. This is the best productivity hack I'll give you today and ever, you're welcome. Right, my days usually look like this. They have some consistency, but are not the same every day because my job changes frequently. Sometimes I write and I prefer doing that in the morning because I feel sharp, same as editing. Other days I film, I usually do it by midday because it's the most consistent natural light indoors for this kind of setup. Afternoons are for creative work like sketching, coming up with ideas, research, reading, laid back work because I feel more relaxed at that time of the day. 
The reason I write my meal times is not that I am a complete psycho that has to eat at the same time every day. It's because I am fasting and that's how I know my feeding window. A cool thing about this template is you can customize your blocks with different colors, dividers and emojis to make it beautiful. If that makes you feel better, I don't know. You can do it and you can move the boxes however you want. Now, to be consistent with the work I want to get done, I need to have a solid system to store my ideas. Let's move into the practical work. I use a content calendar template. I have these columns, idea. This is where everything starts. I get an idea for a video and I write it here. Stuck in a boring life. Let's see what we got here. I hate my life. It might work. So if an idea has potential, it goes into in review. And when I am 100% sure I want to make a video, I move it to the calendar. And that's when things get serious. I give myself a date and start working on it. The thumbnails, titles, script, music, the creative process, if you will. But that's a whole video idea. If that's something you like to see my creative workflow with Notion, let me know in the comments and I will make it. My video projects used to look like this, but I wanted a better system to find stuff within these little folders this year. Now, each project is neatly organized and I use toggle list to hide and show the content of each element. So we have thumbnail, title and video description, script, shot list. That's pre-production. When I have everything, I check the box and move into production. A-roll, B-roll, voiceover, sound effects, stock footage or photos. That's the order that I like to follow when I make videos like this. And then post-production. Also, the order that I like for editing my videos. This productivity system should synchronize flawlessly between all of your devices. The end. That's how I approach my work in a healthy way to be more productive. If you want to try Notion, you can do it for free. I'll leave a link in the video description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support. If you're still a Notion beginner, watch this video next. It'll help. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. By the way, I know this microphone looks ugly, but I think the audio is better. And who cares about aesthetics? I do. Goodbye.